All right, some breaking news we want to tell you about. The Supreme Court has upheld the use of a controversial drug that has been implicated in several botched executions. Let's go straight to our Jan Crawford, who is outside the Supreme Court, along with Ilya Shapiro, who is with the Cato Institute. And Jan, I know you have just gotten your hands on this ruling. Tell us what you know right now. Well, I mean, by a five to four decision, the court has emphatically rejected arguments that Ohio, I mean, Oklahoma's uh, three drug protocol violated the Constitution's Eighth Amendment against cruel and unusual punishment. I mean, the court is very emphatic uh, that this is an issue that, that uh, Oklahoma was entitled to decide. There was no evidence uh, to support claims that it did cause this kind of pain and suffering, uh, and that essentially uh, the liberal justices were trying to hijack the process uh, to get the court to strike down the death penalty across the board. I mean, there was no suggestion that the death penalty is unconstitutional. Uh, there is a lot of tension among the justices in this case. This was not a frontal assault on the death penalty. It's not that kind of case. Although Justice Breyer in dissent made it into that, which uh, gave us some uh, cute lines from Justice Scalia responding to him. Right. More lines from Scalia to digest today. Uh, uh, really kind of uh, sticking it to uh, the liberals and some of their reasoning. Uh, Jan, this was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this had to do with uh, the prisoner Clayton Lockett, who was executed by Oklahoma, uh, and that was apparently one of the longest executions in Oklahoma history. For 43 minutes, some 43 minutes, he sat there moaning, writhing on the, on the gurney, uh, and that was when these prison inmates decided to bring this case before the court, right? There were several questions about executions in Oklahoma and other states uh, that used this drug protocol. Uh, but what came, became clear at the argument was that it was really not clear whether that drug had failed. Uh, there were questions about whether the catheter had been properly inserted. Mm. So the, the, the justices in this decision, uh, the lower court said that there was no evidence of that. And the justices are saying, we don't see any either, and it's not our job to go and find out the facts. They are just flatly rejecting this appeal, and they are also you know, establishing, again, that the death penalty is constitutional. So uh, the liberal justices, uh, Justice Breyer, joined by Justice Ginsburg, in this ruling are calling for the court to reconsider whether the death penalty is constitutional. But there is not a majority on this court to do that. I don't see and, that and, happening. And this really wasn't the case for that. As, as Jan was saying, this was a technical decision in many ways. The Supreme Court typically doesn't find its own facts. So a lot of what Justice Alito was saying for the majority was, we're going to defer to the fact finding of the district court and uh, affirmed uh, by the Court of Appeals that the, the, the petitioner simply did not meet their burden. They didn't persuade the court that these drugs actually do cause that unconstitutional pain and suffering. And in very colorful language, and again, at the argument in this case, and I mean, I've covered the court for 20 years, and this is one of the most contentious arguments that I have ever witnessed. Justice Alito was extremely vocal, rejecting claims by people challenging uh, this method of execution and by the liberal justices for the points that they were making. He said that the uh, opponents of the death penalty were waging this guerrilla war uh, by attacking these drugs uh, and trying to drag the Supreme Court into it. And in his decision, and you know, we've just gotten this, we'll have much more to digest, but you can tell from the language of the decision that this uh, divisive fight on this court is going to continue. I mean, Justice Alito uh, is directly confronting arguments made by uh, Justice Breyer. Justice Breyer suggesting this drug protocol is akin to uh, slowly torturing someone to death, you know, being drawn and quartered or burned at the stake. And Alito says, that is simply not true. And the principal dissent, as Justice Breyer's, resort to this outlandish rhetoric reveals the weakness of the legal arguments. I mean, there is a deep divide on this issue in the court. And Ilya, yeah. let me but just it, ask but you about conservatives that. carry the day. Uh, let me just ask you about that. How do you think that, I know we're still looking at the ruling itself, at the decision, but how do you think this will, in fact, uh, affect the debate over the death penalty in this country? Well, the, the death penalty, the lethal injection using these particular drugs is, uh, is going to continue. Perhaps other states are trying to find, there, there's a shortage of drugs. That's what led to this. A lot of manufacturers uh, and importers are not providing the, uh, the drugs. So some states might start experimenting with other methods of execution as well. So I think at a certain point in the near future, we're going to face head on another challenge to the constitutionality of the death penalty altogether, not simply this technical uh, debate about these particular drugs. And I think that's what the liberal justices, or at least Justice Breyer or Justice Ginsburg, have really tried to set up in this decision. They are using this decision, which Ilya pointed out is, is a technical issue. I mean, it's a very narrow case. But they are using this case to call for, as Justice Breyer says in his dissent, um, uh, 
a full briefing on the basic question of whether or not the death penalty is constitutional, that the court should rethink that issue of whether the Eighth Amendment actually prohibits states from putting condem condemned murderers to death. Uh, so I think he's trying in some ways to use this dissent to trigger that broader debate. Uh, but at the end of the day, there are not five votes on the Supreme Court to overturn the death penalty. Uh, Period. Il Ilya and Jan, uh, let's look ahead to next year. There is a major decision coming on, on affirmative action, yes? Right. I mean, we got that this morning. The justices announced that they will uh, take re revisit a case from Texas on uh, affirmative action in the college admissions process. So I think next June. This came, this came uh, for the second time two years ago. The court ruled eight to one uh, that the lower courts were too deferential to the University of Texas at Austin in terms of how it uses race. And now they've taken it up on the, uh, on the question of whether lower courts are really still being too deferential, whether the standard that Justice Kennedy wrote at that time is unworkable and whether we need to close the door on racial preferences altogether. So next June, uh, presumably, we're going to be standing here uh, instead of talking about, obviously, the big issues of this term, same-sex marriage, uh, Obamacare. Next term, the court keeps on coming. Uh, we're going to be out here talking about affirmative action and, and how much uh, the use of race is permissible in college admissions and in potentially other scenarios. We also are waiting that potentially could have a big abortion we'll case. We'll likely get abortion and we'll also, we are going to have a big election law case about the meaning of one man, one vote, and whether you can take into account non-citizens and voters, that could change the power dynamics in heavily Hispanic, heavily immigrant uh, parts of the country. All right. All right, something we'll be watching. Uh, before I let you guys go, on a lighter note, Ilya, my eyes are not what they used to be, but is that the Constitution, the preamble to the Constitution? I see scrawled across your bow tie there. I figure it's the last day of term. Might as well uh, let the Constitution flag fly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Ilya Shapiro, Jan Crawford, there in front of the Supreme Court. Appreciate it.